Hello, I'm Bob Ross. I'd like to welcome you to the joy of painting. This is a one-hour instructional tape designed to take you step-by-step step through a beautiful little painting project. On this tape, we'll paint a picture which has never been seen on the Joy of Painting television series, and we'll have sufficient time to demonstrate in detail the various steps and procedures used to create individual effects. Think of this tape as a private lesson in my studio, and I've reserved this front row seat just for you. To start off with, I suggest you get a tall glass of iced tea or, or whatever. Sit back and view the tape in its entirety before you begin painting. This way you will have a preconceived idea in your mind of how the painting progresses and how individual effects are achieved. If any procedure is unclear to you, you may run the tape back and see again how an effect was made. Pay particular attention to the way the tools are loaded to achieve certain effects. A great deal of the magic occurs right here on the palette. Take your time and work at your own pace. Speed will come with practice. This is the project we'll be painting today. I think you'll find this painting fun as well as an excellent learning experience. I strongly suggest that you use this painting only as a guide and add your own ideas to it. We each see nature through different eyes and your painting should reflect your visions, your personality. Devote some time to practice and become familiar with each piece of equipment. And very soon, you too will experience the joy of painting. Before we get started, let's put a complete supply list on the screen, listing all the materials you need to paint this fantastic scene with me. Then I'll be right back. All right, you got all your paint set up and you're ready to do a fantastic little painting with me? Tell you what, before we get started, let me take just a second of your time and let's talk a little bit about the materials we're going to use. To start with, the two major brushes that we'll use for this painting. We have a two inch and a one inch natural bristle brush. Now these brushes, they may look like house painting brushes, but they're specifically designed for this technique of painting. These are fantastic little brushes. If you take care of them, they'll last you for many, many years. The painting knives that we use, we have two of them. We have a number 10 painting knife. It's hard to see up against that black canvas there. It's the bigger of the two, okay? And then we have a number five painting knife. Now these knives are designed to do fantastic things. This little one, it's just, it's a little smaller, so it does, you know, the, the finer detail. It's super for that. Notice how the handle is shaped to fit the hand. With these knives, you'll be able to create mountains, trees, cabins, roads, rocks, don't, a multitude of effects. Spend some time practicing with these knives because they can really become your good friend. Some of the other things that we'll use, we have a number six filbert, or a number six fan brush that we'll use. And this is a bristle brush. It's very stiff in comparison to most fan brushes because we use very firm paints. So you need a brush that's very firm. The paints that we use, the paints, are designed specifically for this style of painting. They're very dry. Unlike traditional paints that are, are creamy and soft, this paint is very dry and very firm. It allows us to do wet on wet painting. One other brush that we use, and it may be the most important, this is a number two script liner brush. Now this little brush does fine detail, and most important of all, this is the brush you put your signature on the finished painting with. 
couple other items. Liquid white. Liquid white is a thin white oil-based paint and it's used uh, normally to cover other canvases. We won't do that today, but normally it is. And also to thin other paints. And liquid black. Liquid black is basically the same thing, only it's black. And it does also some fantastic effects. And we'll use a little bit of that today. One other thing that's very good for this style of painting, you need a large palette. When you're using two inch brushes, you need a large area to work in. So this palette is made out of a clear acrylic and it's very large, it's designed to fit the hand. I designed these palettes, oh, years and years ago and I've painted on clear acrylic for over 20, 25 years now. You'll find them easy to clean, easy to maintain, they're lightweight and they really, really are super for this particular style of painting. All right, today we have a canvas that's black, as you can see. Now, I've completely covered the canvas with black gesso. Now, black gesso is an acrylic base that's designed to, to cover the canvas and to make it good, dark, black. Uh, black gesso is designed for oil paint to stick to. It's a super product, and all you do is cover the entire canvas and then allow it to totally and completely dry. This is done, I painted this canvas last night, so it's totally dry. On top of the black gesso now, we're gonna add some thick color. And today I'm gonna to start with midnight black and Prussian blue on the two inch brush. Just load some paint into the bristles, give it a good tap, and let's go right up here. In order to save a little time, I've already covered most of this canvas because it takes a little while to do it. No use wasting all of our time just covering the canvas. So the only part I've got left is this little center area here. Scrub it, scrub it firmly, and cover the entire canvas. It's mostly black, the tiniest, tiniest little bit of blue. I've added the Prussian blue just so the overall color has a least, least little hint of blue. But this painting is basically gray. Now, when you paint it at home, you may want to add more blue or less blue. It's strictly, strictly up to you. All right. After you get it on, use long horizontal and vertical strokes to assure that you have a nice, even distribution of color all the way across the canvas. There we go. And we're in business and ready to do a fantastic little painting. Now. This color that you've applied on top of the black gesso, don't allow, don't allow that to dry before you start. We want this color to remain wet. Okay, let's wash our brush. We wash our brushes with odorless thinner. There's a screen in the bottom of this bucket that we scrub the brush against. That allows the solid material to settle to the bottom and it keeps your thinner relatively clean. Okay, we shake off the excess and <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. That's the fun part of this whole technique, is just, just beating the brushes. I get letters from people say they have no desire to paint. They just bought a brush so they can beat it and take out their frustrations. Now, in this painting, we're gonna have a little moon in the sky. If we had a moon in the sky, there would be a light area coming from that. So to achieve that effect, I'm gonna start with a one-inch brush and titanium white, and just, just load some color into the brush like so, no big deal, okay? Now, you have to make your first decision. Where does your moon live? If it's right in this area, then you want that to be the lightest area in the sky. So start right up there, making little tiny crisscross strokes. Little crisscross strokes. And begin blending outward, always outward. The farther away from the moon you are, the darker it's gonna be. And you're picking up the color that's on the canvas, and this effect will happen automatically automatically. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to worry about it. It'll happen automatically. See there? Okay, now then, you can make this as bright or as dull as you want it. You have to make the big decision. But each and every time, each and every time that you go back into color, clean and dry your brush. You need a clean, dry brush. Reload it. Go back to the light area. If this is your light area, go back to that light area and begin working outward. Once again, you can do this as many or as few times as you desire. 
to achieve a desired lightness. Okay, now color stands out on a black canvas. Oh, it just, just literally jumps out at you. It's unreal. Okay, I'll wash the brush. And as I say, you could do this as many times as you want to get the sky as light as you want it. Now with a two inch brush, all we're gonna do, still using little crisscross strokes, is blend the sky. Just wanna blend this color together a little bit. Not a whole bunch. We don't wanna kill all those little actions that just sort of happen automatically by doing the little crisscross strokes. Now, brush strokes are very important in a black canvas, very lightly. Go over the canvas and remove the brush strokes. And the sun of the gun just appears. And maybe we'll put a little more light. Let me just put a little more light right in this area. See, you can just keep adding till you get it however you want it. And very lightly blend that. All right. Okay. Now I'll clean the brush one more time. This painting will give you a lot of practice cleaning the brush. There we are. Now then, we want a moon up here. Today we'll finger paint. So we take, I just use the forefinger here, and let's go right up here, decide where your moon's gonna live, and just lay it in. Just like so. Now you could use a brush if you don't wanna get paint on your finger, no problem. One inch brush, fan brush, just spin it. But that's the easiest way. Now, with our big brush, very lightly, very lightly, very lightly. I just wanna blend that a touch just to take out the fingerprint. There. Okay. Now maybe today in this sky we'll have some clouds. So I'll take the old fan brush. I'm gonna mix up a touch of the blue and a lot of the black. Proportionately much more black than blue. Just mix up some color. Okay, let me clean off my knife. And I just wiped the knife on a paper towel. Okay. Fan brush, go right in here, load some color into it. Just load some color. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, maybe there's a happy little cloud that lives up here in the sky. Maybe it comes right across the bottom of your moon here. Son of a gun, there he went. And you just sort of scrub these in. Just wherever you think they should live. Maybe there's, there's one. This is his friend, he lives right down here. And he floats around. He's a little bigger, maybe. Big, strong cloud. Shoot, maybe, tell you what, let's come right up here. Maybe there's a, another old cloud. Lives right there, wherever you want them. You know, you can, a little bigger, you can just spin them in there. There, see? You can make any size cloud that you want in your world. There we go, maybe a little one that just sneaks off the canvas here. And I'll tell you what, maybe over in here, maybe there's another one. And he lives right in there. Mm. Okay. Just, just let him play around the sky and have fun. All right. Wash our hand brush. Just give it a good scrub. Don't get to beat it so much. It's not as much fun. Now then, go right into titanium white. Just add a little of that to the brush. See, just titanium white. Give it a little push, and that'll load paint right on the end of the bristles. See, give it a little push, okay? Now then, let's add some highlights up here. Usually, all you have to do is just touch. The paint will probably come right off. If it doesn't, you can rub it a little and get a little paint off. Now don't worry that it doesn't look too good when you first put it on there. We're gonna, we're gonna work with it some more. We're not finished yet. See there? Just, just get some color on these clouds. That's all we're trying to do right now. Just to get color on there. Now these, the lights coming from the moon, they're highlighted on the top. But over here, now the lights coming from here, 
These, be careful, these little rascals will sneak up on you. These are highlighted on the bottom. See, and you can put little things in there to create different levels. Like so. Just like so. There's one. This one here, don't want him left out. And up here. Now, this one's quite a distance away. Not a whole bunch of color. Don't keep this painting quite dark. There we go. Now, you know, when you buy your first tube of paint, you get an artist's license. Hmm. That artist's license says you can do anything that you want to do. So if you want clouds that are real bright, make them bright. If you want dark little clouds, then that's the way they ought to be. Painting is very individual. Very individual. Okay, now then. This is your bravery test. We're gonna check you out and see how brave you are. With a clean, dry, two-inch brush, I wanna gently, gently blend this entire sky, but very lightly. Very, very lightly. You can always add more pressure, but start off with just the least, least little touch. See what that does to your clouds? Just blends everything together. That easy. That easy. It's the sneakiest, easiest way to make little clouds at nighttime I've ever seen. And it works. And you can do it. You can do it. You can do anything. Anything. There we go. And that easy. That easy. We have a beautiful and very effective little sky. Now then, let's take the knife and go back into that same color. It's mostly black with just a touch of blue, but mostly black. Pull it out very flat, cut across, get that tiny little roll of paint. Lives right out there on the end of the knife, right out on the very end. Now this knife has a straight edge. It's very easy to load. Okay, let's go right up here. And maybe there's a, a ridge of mountains that live here. Just some happy little mountains. Now these are far, far away. Push very hard. Get strong, tough. You just mm, try to push that paint right through the fabric. Right through the fabric. Just really, really push it into the fabric. You can probably see how much the canvas is bending and pushing so hard. Now, we take a two-inch brush, and we want to grab it and pull. This has wet paint on it, so you can move this color. Grab it and pull, like so. There we go. All right. All right. Now then, let's have some fun. Let's add a little touch of highlight to that mountain but a very, very small amount, tiniest little bit. Pull the paint out as flat as you can get it, and then the least little roll of paint. I'm, I'm, I can't tell you what a small amount. Pull it out flat, tiniest little amount. Just tiny little amount. Okay, let's go up here. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Touch, and just let it glide right down that mountain. Touch, touch. We just want to put the indication of a little highlight far away. Touch, touch. If one's too bright, if you just keep working with it, a dark color will eat it up and it'll go away. There, see, pull straight down. A little bit to the angle, angle a little in that direction. Let's take some blue and black and a little white. I want to make a darker color darker color, and same tiny little roll of paint out there. Small little roll of paint. Good. Now then, come in here and begin adding some shadows. This is darker. Much, much darker. Just drop in all kinds of little shadows. Pull them, pull them. Work with them. Let them blend back and forth. This is a good place 
to use the small knife, that little knife that get right in here and do some of these little things that are hard to reach. If you have problems with the size of the big knife, then take the little knife. Boy, just that little rascal is just designed to sneak right in there. You know, maybe, maybe this comes down here and there's a little bump that lives there. You can just create all kinds of effects. Put all kinds of big valleys and hills and... Hmm. See, here's, here's something that's fun. Maybe you want to just bring this right on around. Maybe, maybe like so. A little bit of color. It doesn't take much, see? You can just sort of bring that together and make a, a deep recessed area in there. That's where the eagle lives. He hides up there. He's safe in there. Nobody bothers him. Nobody bothers him there. There we go. Okay. Now then, we want to make that look very soft and far away. So we'll take the two-inch brush and very lightly, I'm going to just tap. I'm just going to tap very lightly. I don't want to destroy. I want to diffuse. Now very lightly, lift it upward, upward, upward. See, and that softens it, pushes everything back. You can continue to do this till it absolutely disappears on you if you want to. So, but you can soften it to any degree of brightness or darkness that you want in your world. Hmm, not that easy. You got a nice little ridge of mountains. Tell you what, let's put some big mountains in here. Same color. This will give you a lot of nice practice with a knife and making fantastic mountains, same color. Black with the least little touch of blue. Cut across and we have a roll of paint again. That little roll of paint. Practice always loading your knife with that. Okay? If you get in the habit of that, it'll make your life a lot easier. Maybe, maybe this big old mountain whew, lives way up here in the sky. He lives up here in the clouds. I've been accused of living in the clouds myself. Okay, maybe there's a peak here. Wherever. Just, just sort of decide where you think they should be and drop them in, maybe. Let's put several here. That'll give you some nice practice. And nothing, nothing pays bigger dividends in painting than practice. Absolutely nothing. There. You know, one of the things that you'll find very soon, how to paint becomes easy. What to paint becomes a son of a gun. And for that, I'd suggest we have numerous instructional books that go along with the television series. And each book gives you 13 projects, individual projects with complete written instructions and hundreds and hundreds of how-to photographs that lead you step by step through each project. But if you're, ever, if you're ever looking for ideas, that's one of the best ways to find a lot of ideas. Okay, now I'm just taking a two-inch brush and I'm going to pull this color down. The other thing, maybe maybe you want to take classes. I'm getting old and feeble. I don't do a lot of teaching myself anymore. But we have a staff, a nationally certified staff of instructors that we sponsor, and we send them to art shops or to organizations all over the country. All over the country. If you'd like some information about them, drop me a line. I'll be glad to send it to you. We guarantee each and every one of these teachers. There. Now, if come back up here with the camera a minute. See right up in here where where you pull with this brush. See, you can see brush strokes. See those brush strokes? It's a super way of laying out all your highlights and shadows without being committed. You can just make all kinds of effects. See? I think those will show up. But use that. Use it to your advantage. And especially on these black canvases. It's a super, super nice way. to lay out your whole mountain range without being committed. You can still change it. Okay, now then, let's put some snow on these mountains. Let's brighten them up. Titanium white, least little touch of the black and blue in it. Pull it out very flat again, always flat. Cut across, a little roll of paint. Okay, let's go up here. 
Now then, start here. Take the point of the knife, put it right at the point of this little, little peak, and begin painting some highlights. Just let it flow. No pressure. No pressure. And you want the paint to break. By break, I mean have these holes in it. See? No pressure at all. Very delicate touch. Probably the biggest problem people run into doing this is they're applying too much pressure. Or the second thing is they're trying to use a thin, soupy paint. You really need a dry, firm paint. This, this breaking occurs because the paint grabs the canvas and holds on. When you're holding this knife, hold it right on the metal furrow right there with thumb and forefinger. These fingers, all they do is they guide. See, this handle's tapered. It's shaped to fit the hand. All you do with these fingers is guide, thumb and forefinger, and that'll, that'll keep your pressure very delicate and very light. There. See, let's begin. No pressure, no pressure. Just begin laying in all these beautiful little things. See how color just, it just comes alive on these black canvases. They are so fantastic. They may be one of my favorite things in painting. I love black canvases. Absolutely love them. There we go. In the series, we painted, oh, I don't know how many. Gosh, there's hundreds of, there's hundreds of shows in the Joy of Painting series now. But we've painted a lot of black canvases. You know, if you haven't seen all the shows in your area, give you give your PBS station a call or whatever you're seeing the, the Joy of Painting. Give them a call. Tell them you'd like to see them all. We donate those. They're free. They can have all of them they want. Give you a lot of painting ideas, though. Okay, now then, let's make some shadows here. I'll take for that white, blue, and black. Same old color, about like so. Okay, cut across once again. No, you get tired of hearing that, that little roll of paint. Now then, maybe I'll start right here. Maybe this rascal, does it put a little shadow right in there, see? Shadows go in opposite direction. Highlights go this way, shadows this way. Maybe we can bring this one right on through. You make the decision, wherever you want it to live, wherever. And you can come back here, see here, and you could bring us round. Shoot, look at that, look at that, look at that. See what you can do? You can do anything on this canvas, anything. Okay, back to our shadow colors. And like right here, see, if you put a little shadow there, all of a sudden, that projects right up. Blip. A lot of power you have in your hands. A lot of power. Can move mountains, can change mountains. You can do anything on this canvas. There we go. See, put a little shadow there, back in there. Here's one. These little peaks need individual shadows. Individual shadows. So right on down. Here's another peak. Put a shadow there. Shoot wherever you want them. Maybe this one comes down. Moves around. Wherever, wherever, wherever. This style of painting is probably the freest form of art I've ever been exposed to. I love this because I don't use patterns. I just sort of, I sort of let it happen. It just, let it flow right out of your imagination. You, you build a vision in your mind, a, a dream, and you put it on canvas before it escapes. There. You create your own world, and you make it exactly the way you want it. It's freedom here. It's absolute and total freedom here. Okay? Now then. Let's create some mist down at the base of these mountains. And to do that, I'm going to take the two-inch brush, and I'm just going to tap, following the angles. Most important that you follow these angles. As you go further up, lighter, 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 lighter. If you begin picking up paint, instead of having to go through the whole cleaning procedure, if you have a little paint on the brush, you can just 
<laughs> you just wrap the devil out of it, and it takes that excess paint off. Okay. Now, if you're if you're doing this at home, you might not want to spread paint all over the all over the living room. I might suggest you get you a brush beater rack. That's a little wire rack. It goes in the bottom of a of a waste paper basket or something. You can shake the brush down inside of the basket and then just beat the devil out of it on this rack. And it contains all of the all of the waste material, all of the thinner, right in that bucket. Now very lightly, very lightly, lift upward. Just lift upward. See, this creates that illusion of mist there. Very, very lightly, barely touching the canvas. Soft. Over here, follow these angles. Very light, though. Mm. Now, see, if you do this very lightly, following these angles, and all this tapping, it doesn't destroy. It only diffuses. You can still make out detail through there. And that's what makes your painting interesting. People wonder, how in the world you created all that mist and can still see through it? And it was easy. It was easy. All right. I'm going to wash this old brush. Give it a shake. <laughs> and just wrap the devil out of it. Tell you what, tell you what. I get carried away with this brush washing. Let's have some little footy hills back here. And for that, I'll use a one-inch brush. I'm going to take some, a little titanium white. I'm going to reach right up in here and go right into this. This was sort of a, this was our shadow color for the mountain. So it's blue, white, black. This is a lighter color, but it's not pure white. Not pure white, okay, let's go right up here. And maybe we got a little footy hill, and he lives all right in here somewhere. Show you several ways to make these. Touch with a corner of the brush, and just pull downward. And it makes the indication of a lot of little distant snow-covered trees and bushes and all kind of things. That's one of the easiest ways there to make them. Another way, you can take the brush and stand it up like this, see, and pull it down, and it'll make more individualized trees. Sort of up to you. Sort of up to you, however you want them. And maybe these come right on down, right on down. You can pull them with the brush, or you can use the edge of the brush and do them that way, whichever way. Try it both ways. See which way works the best for you, and that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Okay, then we can come down here, see, and begin making another row right inside of that one. Just create all kinds of wonderful little effects. Now I want to create mist. So I'm going to tap the base of that. Just tap the base of it. I don't want to destroy the detail. I just want to create mist. Then very lightly, Lift upward. Give it a little upward lift. Okay, sometimes you can even do this. Well, let's look, let's do one here. We'll take the fan brush, same color, same color. Now, maybe there's a maybe one or two little trees here. Well, maybe they got really strong. See? Maybe there's a couple little rascals that they go wee up here. See? Maybe this one projects clean on up past that. And there's a multitude of ways to make these little footy hills. There, wash the brush. And we can take our two inch brush and very lightly just give it a little upward lift to bring it all together. Another, let's do this. Let's mix up black and blue. Just black and blue. Okay, let me clean my knife. Clean the knife. We'll take the old fan brush again. Load this rascal full of color. See there, a lot of color. A lot of both sides, really full. Let's go up here. Now maybe we want to put the indication of some distant trees in here, little evergreens that are far away. All you have to do with this dark color is just take the brush and tap downward. Now if yours, when you're doing this at home, if it begins looking like telephone poles or fence posts, See, if you can see how that looks. The only thing that's happened here is you don't have enough. Just put a few more in there. 
Just a few more. Reload your brush as needed. Maybe, maybe they come right on up here. Wherever, just sort of make a decision and drop them in. We'll just let them come right on up through here. We'll just cover up this part of the mountain. Just cover him up. There he goes. A lot of paint, though. The brush is really, really loaded with paint. And just drop all these happy little trees in there. These are just indications. They're too far away to have a lot of detail. Okay, now maybe you have to make a decision. How far do these go? Where do they go? Where do they go? Maybe they just come right on down through here. Right on down. And just sort of, we'll just sort of let them fade right off into nothing back here. We don't know where they go. We don't care. Just don't care. Okay, now all we're doing here is just dropping in a little bit of color. Just a little bit of color. And then very lightly, you can just lift that up, barely touching. Just give it a little upward lift, upward. Upward, upward. Okay, I'm gonna wipe some of that dark color right off the brush. And I'll go right into a lighter color. Same old dirty fan brush. Just go right into a color It's a little lighter. Just pull a little bit out. No big deal here. Okay, maybe here and there, there's a few trees that are a little bit lighter and they stand out. It's another way of creating some contrast in here. Just a few little trees here and there. See? You can even grab it and pull up to make it look like little tree trunks that are far away. See there? Just whatever. Okay, take our big brush, lift it, lift it, lift it, blend it in a little bit, and it creates a whole nother plane. Just like so. All right. All right. This is really a fun little painting, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one. These black canvases are wonderful. I'm just absolutely crazy about it. Okay, now then, let's put some, let's have some little snow-covered things back here, little bushes. I'm gonna dip my brush into a touch of the liquid white and then right into titanium white, the old fan brush. Loaded pretty full of color, pretty full, like so. A little bit of that blue into it too, don't want it quite so bright. All right, let's go up here. Now then, maybe back in here, there's some little, little frost-covered grassy areas. Just take the fan brush and push it upward. Give it a little upward bend, see? That makes all those little sparkly tops. Look at that, look at that, that easy. Boy, and against this black canvas, they just stand out. Oh, they stand out, They're so pretty. Just do it in layers, do it in layers, leaving a little dark between each layer. Now then, maybe over here. See, we'll have it come down this way too, whatever. Maybe it goes right on up, make a little little incline. It's cause water, water always goes down into the recessed area. See, push upward, just layer after layer after layer, as many or as few as you want. Here, I'll show you a little trick. Now, reflections are so much fun. Take the two-inch brush, touch a little tiny touch of the titanium white. Go right underneath here, grab and pull straight down, straight down. It's important you go straight down, straight down. See, straight down, just like so. Isn't that neat, the way you can make reflections? Thought you'd like that. Maybe one of the nicest things that happens in this technique and because we have this color on the black gesso that's underneath here, see, it mixes with that white that I'm pulling down with, and boom, instant reflections. That easy. That easy. Now, very lightly, three hairs and some air just come across. Now, see, sometimes, like in here, you can push and wiggle. You can make those reflections move. 
you can literally push this wet paint. All right. Nice little reflections. I sort of wiped out some of these little grassy areas, but you can come right back and push them back in. See? It's your world. You put them back wherever you want them, you take them away. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, maybe there's a little peninsula, a little projection that comes right out here. You just make the decision. See, by putting that there, it makes all different planes, gives them more distance to your, to your background. There we go. Now then, tell you what, I'm going to dip right into the liquid black and put some on the palette. This is just straight liquid black. Just put it on the palette and then take the knife and cut across. Okay, let's do that again. Just pull it out flat and come across. That loads a tiny little bit of the liquid black right on the edge of the blade. It's hard to see, but it's there. Now then come right up here with the liquid black and let's just cut in a dark, dark water line. See there? Now the liquid black is oil-based. It's not the same thing as black gesso. Black gesso is an acrylic. This is an oil base. It takes days and days for this to dry. Black gesso, it dries in, oh, a half hour. Maybe even quicker. It's very fast. It dries very fast. Okay, see, this just puts a little water line underneath these. You could do this in white. I just think it looks neat to do a little black water line in this particular painting. But try it. If you if you want a white one, stick it in there. You can do anything. See? A few little little things here and there. Mm. That's super. Tell you what, let's do. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let me mix up a big bunch of paint. We'll use black. Put some brown there too, blue. Good dark color. That's all we're looking for. Dark, dark, dark color. Okay. Let's make some. Let's make some happy little evergreens here. And today, let's make them with a knife, just to give you some practice. Maybe one lives right there. Right there. Okay. Now, on the edge of the knife there, there's just a tiny little dot of paint, right on the point. Use that. Come right up here. And just tap. Just touch. Just touch. Now you might want to practice these a little bit before you jump up and do them right up in your sky here. Practice one on your palette or on some old cardboard or someplace that doesn't count. These are a little bit harder than they look. See, just put, let them get bigger and bigger, put the little limbs. Now these are very thick, paint's very thick. Places it must be an eighth of an inch thick. When this is dry, you can actually feel this tree. It'll have real shadows. There. Okay, maybe to get a little more practice, tell you what, let's do one right there. Right there. Little touch of paint right out on the point, right on the point of the knife. Now, my knives are painted black so they don't shine, but they're exactly like yours. When I started, the knife was bright, shiny like chrome. I just have to paint them black. See? Paint, water paint gets bigger and bigger. Okay. There we go. And we can make another happy little tree. And he lives right here beside his friend. Put some limbs out here. Some arms on his tree. There we go. See there? And we have two little trees that live out here and, and they have fun. Can't tell you what, that was so much fun. Let's do Let's do a big tree, and he lives. Boy, that is a big tree. He lives right up there, right up here. Just the point of the knife. Each time, we begin adding more paint, more and more paint. It's very thick, a lot of paint. Mm. Well, that's scary coming right across that mountain. You work so hard to make and just 
patty caking in this great big tree. But these are fantastic trees. People, if you're out selling your painting, people would just love them. Just absolutely love them. Impasto type painting. You can do entire paintings using just this knife. In fact, on a couple of the a couple of the shows in some of the past series, I've demonstrated how you could just use a knife and do entire paintings. It's unreal what you can do with this son of a gun if you just take your time to make friends with it. There. There we go. Okay, big tree. Big old tree. Now then, one of the nicest little ways of putting some highlights and shadows on these trees. Watch here. We'll take. We'll take blue and black, of course, since that's about all we have. Mix up sort of a dark bluish black color. And let's go in here. And the first thing we'll do is put the shadows on. This will be the shadow color. So cut across, get that little roll of paint, little tiny roll of paint. OK, here's your light source right here. So light's going to shine across here. Your shadows will be on this side. Very delicate touch, very delicate, just barely touching the canvas. All you want it to do is hit those high points. See, put the shadows in. A little bit on this tree. Don't want him left out. Barely, barely touching. Barely touching. Now, on the other side, light's coming from there. Shadow's going to be on the opposite side. All you're doing is allowing the paint to touch those high points. You're not, you're not putting any pressure on this. I can't, can't say that enough. If you put a bunch of pressure, you're going to pull out a big square here. <laughs> have a square tree. I went to school with him. There. Now then, for the highlight side, we'll take white with just the least, least little touch of blue and black in it. Load the knife exactly the same way. And then let's come back and very carefully, very carefully add some highlights. See there? Isn't that beautiful? And it works so well. Look at that. So well. Be careful not to come just down the center of the tree. It'll make the tree look square. Come past center. Sometimes don't go all the way. You don't want your tree to look square. <laughs> Them square trees are hard to find anymore. Most of them's been cut down and made into boxes. OK. Now, barely, barely touching. Just allow a little touch of that color here and there to pull off. Looks like big gobs of snow just hanging on your, out here on the tree limbs. It's a beautiful, beautiful effect. Beautiful effect. Mm. That easy. That easy. Now then, tell you what. Tell you what. I'm going to take a one-inch brush. Let me clean it. Let me clean it. And you just beat him the same way, only not as hard. Go right into the liquid white and then pull it through titanium white. A little bit of blue on the brush. Pull it in one direction, one direction only. Load it deep, load it full. We're going to make some happy little bushes. We need a lot of paint. One direction. Look at the end of that brush. Full of color. OK, by pulling it in one direction here, it generates a curve, see? Pull it, and I'm going to turn it. There's a curve on the brush. See that curve? Now, we want that curve to be on the top, always on the top. Very important. Let's go up here. Maybe back in here lives a happy bush. Now, with a curve to the top, just push, push, and begin making individual little bushes. If you have trouble making your paint stick, add more of the liquid white. OK, maybe right here. Right here lives another happy little bush. Here's one. But do them one at a time. Don't, don't just try to knock a bunch of hits in there and, and think bushes will appear. They're stubborn little devils. One at a time. Maybe one lives right out here. See him? Now, you don't have to put dark underneath because there's already dark on the canvas. If that wasn't there, though, you'd have to put some dark under here or it wouldn't show. See? One at a time. 
one at a time, one at a time. Just put them little rascals right in there. You can use the brush like this, give it a little upward push, and makes little grassy areas, see? That easy, that easy point. Didn't color just shine against that black canvas? It's beautiful, absolutely striking. Now then, I tell you what, let's put a little cabin in there. Cabins are a lot of fun. And if I lived someplace like that, I'd be getting cold about now. I'd have to have a cabin, so let's do that. Easiest way I found to make a little cabin is take, we'll make a log cabin day. Take the knife and scrape out a basic shape. See there? And this allows you to lay out your perspective and also to remove the thin, loose paint. So the next layer of paint will stick a lot easier. And you're not committed at this time. All we're doing is just getting rid of some of the paint and, and have a general, a very general idea. We'll take, let's use Van Dyke Brown, a little touch of dark sienna in it, just sort of mix them together. That little roll of paint, we'll go to this back eave back here. Do the back eave. Let's try it straight across, okay? Now, I'll go right into the titanium white. Once again, the little roll of paint on the edge of the knife. Now here, best thing I have found is just to lay out a nice firm edge. See, like that. And then you can take the knife and come right down. And you get a beautiful straight edge on top and side. That easy. <laughs> That's super. Now then, we can go back with our dark sienna and our Van Dyke Brown and just begin filling this little rascal in. Here, we're just blocking in color. We really don't care here. Just blocking it in. There. And if you pick up a little of that white, which you will, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Clean the knife. Now, we need some snow on the other side of this cabin, right along here. Take a little titanium white, just that little roll of paint, and put a little bit on the other side. Now, we said we'd make a log cabin. I'll take dark sienna, a little touch of, little touch of the Van Dyke, and just mix something about like so. Leave it sort of marbledy. Once again, once again, pull it out, cut across a little roll of paint, always using that. Now then, let's just come right across here, and let's just up here. See, we'll have logs that stand up here. Put them in first. That's for the top. That easy. That easy. Now then. Down here we'll have logs that go sideways. So we'll just put our dark back in. Dark back in. Take our same color. And then we'll come this way. See here? Just to make the indication of some little logs. Just give them a little downward pull. Little downward pull. See there, you can just make as many or as few as you want. Now on the other side, over here, the light's coming from up there. This side will be very dark. Don't want much going on over here. Keep that very dark, very, very dark. Need a door, got to have a door. So we'll come right here and just with a little brown, little Van Dyke, put in a door. Now at the base of this, we do a cabinectomy. Just cut that rascal off wherever we want it. Okay, tell you what, let me grab the small knife here. Maybe there's a window here. Take the small knife and put in a little window. Maybe there's one over here. See, that easy. You can just drop them rascals in. Take a little touch of white, go around the edges, soup, soup. Sort of outline them. You can come in here, and just an indication of a little snow that's laying in between some of these logs, whew, boy, this looks cold. I've had a rough winter here. That little cabin's coming right along. Now then, let's take titanium white, and we'll put a little path, just using titanium white. Coming across like so. See there? Wherever you want it. Now then, and go back to our one inch brush. It's full of liquid white and titanium white. 
pull it in one direction, load a lot of color into the brush. And let's go up here and we'll put a few happy little bushes right around the edge. See, that'll bring the path right into the painting. See, there, brings it all together. Maybe over here, ooh, boy, the weeds are about to grow up around here. This old fella, maybe, maybe he had a couple drinks too many. He went out to check his traps out here and he fell in. Oh, and he lives with the old trout now. Make up little stories. And it helps you, it helps you sort of see things. Now, with a clean knife, I want to come in here and just scratch in indication of little sticks and little twigs and all these bushes, some of them out here in the path that are growing. See, just put them in here and there, wherever you think they should live. This is just a clean knife. All we're doing is scratching through, allowing some of the black to come out. If you want bigger sticks, turn it a little sideways. There we go. So out in here we have some. And even back in here, you can put all kinds of happy little things. Okay. Now, sometimes it's fun to take, oh, a little, a little touch of brown and just use the white mixed together. And you can just touch and make the indication like it looks like the ends, let's get a little more brown there. It looks like the ends of little logs. See, maybe there's logs on the other side in there sort of sticking through. Put a few right out here, right back in there, and it just helps add a little more detail. A little more detail to your cabin. If you wanted a, a chimney, you could take a little brown, use a small edge of the knife, and just touch and come across. Now maybe, see, a little bit of snow, and he hadn't lit his fire lately, so we'll put a little snow on top, see there? Just like so, but we have a little chimney now. And that easy, that easy. Now then, we can take the liner brush, and I'll just use a little of the liquid white, a little liquid white, and maybe there's a little snow-covered twig here and there. Put these in just just to add detail and see. Ooh, makes it look a little colder, and something like so. I tell you what, I think we're on the verge of having a finished painting here. If you've enjoyed this painting and enjoyed painting along with me, we have numerous other instructional videotapes that will take you step by step through other fantastic painting projects, not only by myself, but numerous other super, super artists from all over the country. And they'll teach you different mediums, just about everything you can think of from painting to arts and crafts, sculpture, anything you like. And if you'd like a free brochure, drop me a line. I'll be glad to send you a color catalog it, that lists all types of things. Thank you, enjoy. I'm going to take a little, little color on my liner brush, thin it down with paint thinner till it's like ink, just like ink. And I'm going to sign this painting. And I've certainly enjoyed painting with you today. I hope you, hope you've enjoyed it half as much as I have. Hope you give this a try. These black canvases are some of the most fantastic paintings that you'll ever do. When you're finished with these, view them under several different light sources. You change the light onto this painting, and it's like having two paintings. Show it, show it with a strong light on it. You won't believe what you have. And from the joy of painting and the entire staff here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless.